Welcome back to Above the Popcorn. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you guys are new, my name is Stephanie and happy Halloween. For the sake of the look, I'm going to go ahead and take off my ojo, so I'm going to be blind. The wig, more than likely, is going to come off at some point, um, sooner rather than later because I, just, I can't deal. This is just too much. So today, I'm going to be ranking all 26 haunted houses in Texas that I have been to, from my least favorite to my favorite. Ears did not deceive you. I did say haunted houses. I did say 26. I freaking love haunted houses. Yes, do not at me about my, like, not liking horror movies. Yeah, I cannot explain it. Officially, do start off this video. Go ahead after this, or you can do it before you officially start this video. Check out the only horror movie review that i'll be doing for the year i actually recorded myself while i was watching the movie so i do have a little scare montage there well just like jumps um it is a very short video because i really don't want to talk much about it but um i'll have it come up here and i'll link it down below so you guys enjoy so coming in at number 27 would be unknown haunted house um i don't really remember too much about it this is actually the only one that my mom has ever been to we kind of like took her to one and we're like this is why we're obsessed and then we kind of took her to a sucky one coming but in and number 26 would be terror nights in at tyler texas this one also is coming in in last place just because I don't remember going to this one honestly either so it didn't leave any kind of impression the only reason that i know that i went there was because of my groupon that said that i used it sometime in 2015. coming in number 25th would be screams uh haunted house in waxahachie texas i hope i said that right because i know how i am i don't actually like it i don't enjoy it it's um a really far drive for something like that it's not really my cup of tea i have multiple haunted houses but you have to make sure that you get there like super early because trust me it gets like stupid packed like seriously we usually get there like really early we're not about that line life so we always try to get there um as early as possible they do actually um have a temper where they do have a renaissance fair um i did do my very first vlog there so again i'll have it come up here and i'll uh, link it down below so you guys can ch go check that out um definitely go for the renaissance fair that's fun but not for screams um, i guess if you were to go it would probably be best to buy the fast pass so i personally for sure do not recommend this um haunted house I, i've been twice and i was very disappointed both times that i went coming in number 24th place would be jnf house of horror in garland texas i believe now they actually merge with slaughterhouse but slaughterhouse is in a different category because it was by itself for a lot of time i don't like it either you guys it was nothing scary about it and not really memorable either to be honest with you uh, the only reason that it's not in number 25th was because i really dislike screams literally like my my sisters like none of them recall us going there and we full-on went there so it's not just me this one is one that is on groupon so you know if you want to check it out it's not coming in number 23rd place would be hangman's house of horror in fort worth texas um this is another one that we went to just once um that was enough and it was actually years ago and we had gone to cutting edge and we'll get to cutting edge later and then we ended up going to hangman because they were like i think like a exit or two exits apart i really don't remember but i know they weren't that far apart and the only thing really that I remember was like this big old tree and we kind of had to like find our way. I think like maze maybe. I really don't recall too much. I just know that all the groups in that particular room ended up like finding each other. So you weren't, by that point, you're literally right behind other groups. So you're not like flying solo. You end up, um you know bunching up with the other groups it just kind of defeats the purpose but. which brings me to my 22nd pick which would be the cutting edge in fourth Worth, texas as well now this is one of the largest haunted houses that there is and we used to go uh, every year early on when we first started we really haven't been back and i would say five years or so the thing that it has going for it is that it is the largest haunted house so you're in there for quite some time but honestly like i have not been in a haunted house that is as hot as this one i mean most of them do get pretty warm because you know they have like a lot of people and a lot of stuff and then of course when you add the fog machines to it but this one is like oh my god it gets really really hot and i just i can't do that um, and then you do end up going through a lot of just dark places so there's like literally nothing there to scare you whether it be people or just props they have like nothing the only thing that is fun about it would be the ending um 
I don't know if they still have it. Oh my god, you guys' hair. Um, I don't know if they still have it, but that was something I was looking forward to every time we went. Um, they kind of like let all these groups build up and um, they let you go into this room and you have to find the door that says this is the way out or this is it or something like that. I myself nor nobody in my party has ever found the door. Honestly, I don't think anybody has ever found the door from when I've gone. Does this door exist? If you guys have been to the cutting edge, let me know about down below if you found the door or if, you know, when you were in that group, somebody found the door because, like, I have never seen the door. Like, what is behind this door? There's, of course, there's the getting out of the actual haunted house back into the parking lot, which involves, like, this walkway that has, like, a bunch of, like, bubbles. They have it closed off and they just have like foam bubbles kind of going and it gets really really hard to breathe um i know there's people that like panicked in there i don't like it um i think i went through there maybe like twice and then i ended up finding out that there's actually a little side door so if you guys have been there and you love to go to the cutting edge and you don't know just know there's a little side door i think you pass the side door before you go into the bubble place so, and it's kind of creepy because there's nothing there, obviously. So, I remember that first time that I went, I was like, oh, crap. And I was by myself, and I'm like, fuck, something's going to scare me. And I'm like, well, whatever. Let it scare me. I don't care because I'm not going to go through the bubbles. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with this wig. So coming in 21st place would be the Haunted Landmark in Greenville, Texas. We went for the first time last year after we went to a different one and it was early and we're always very pumped and we're like let's see what other haunted house there is so we kind of ended up on that one by coincidence it was decent enough um i don't see myself going back to it if you are claustrophobic i definitely do not recommend this haunted house for you because towards the last little bit of it you are going through like a little maze and it is very tight i did not like it at all i mean you literally have to be walking through the side and it's just no fun. Uh, so obviously there's something that is scaring you because nothing can fit because you alone can barely fit. Coming in at number 20 would be the Fatal End in Dallas. It was actually in the West End. This is one that's actually closed now. Now the Fatal End was one that we just kind of, did we end up going there on purpose or did we just see it? I think we just saw it when we went to the Red River Rivalry deal there at the West End. I think it was also small. I, I did get scared, that's why it's kind of higher up in my list. But um, honestly, all these other ones, they, ugh, I really would never revisit them. It was just this one part that really like scared the crap out of me. Coming in at number 19 would be the Strangley Brothers Haunted Circus in Grand Prairie. That is another one that's also closed. It only lasted a few few years i went to that one twice i believe and i mean it was fun you know it was like a little circus theme it's closed so i really don't need to say much about it either coming in at 18th place would be the museum of horrors in elmont or waco it used to be called like a texas chainsaw or chainsaw massacre something like that uh, but they apparently renamed it i don't know when we actually went for the second time just a few weeks ago we haven't been in like years but let me tell you a quick little story about the very first time that we went it was so hilarious we literally tell this story every single year actually one of my sisters my friend and myself it was just us three that went i don't know why it was just us three but we were so brave because it was just us there's actually two haunted houses on this um, property, but um, we're going to go ahead and just go to where we left. And that's because that's when we got the shit scared out of us. And we're going back to the car and we were literally like one of the last people there. There was just like maybe like a handful of other cars there. Possibly, more than likely there were the uh, employees. And when we were walking, I remember if it was my friend or if it was my sister that said, imagine if there's somebody on the other side of the car like the killer and i said oh crap and i remember like unlocking the car they're like well you just let the killer inside so i locked it back down <laughs> and next thing you know this asshole comes from the side of the car and scares the crap out of us okay so i went i unlocked the car i opened up the, the door my friend jumps into the car it, look this is how she jumps i'm gonna reenact it for you she jumps into the car like this okay and i jump in and i'm like on top of her legs half her body's on the other side i close my door and i lock it did you notice how i didn't say another person that was with us went into the car that is right i locked my sister out 
I was ready to sacrifice her. I honestly, they forgot all about her. Um, I would have forgot my friend too, but she jumped into that damn car and she knew what to do. I mean, I didn't like drive off. I just want to clarify that. But I did lock. Technically, I just locked her out of the car because I was like, while the killer's like killing her, like we can go away. Also now, I don't know what the heck they were thinking about you guys, but they ended up taking off the parking. They, I remember you would go in and they had like this big old field for you to park. Now they have you parking on the fucking side of the road. I don't know if there's parking somewhere else and you have to like really walk, but when we, when we got there, we're like, why are these cars like on the side? We're like, damn, it must be packed that everybody's literally like on the side, like on the service road, like just parked and it's like, well, go in here. That's where you're supposed to park. And they have it closed and i'm like oh well that so yeah so just kind of be prepared for that that if you go you're gonna have to park on the side of the road and you're gonna have to walk a good distance if you don't get there early enough coming oh. in 17th place would be the 13th floor in san antonio texas I actually just went this year this is actually the first haunted house that we did for the season honestly it's not what i expected um i guess it was the wrong 13th floor museum because there was not 13 floors in this place if y'all know which one i'm maybe thinking about let me know down below because i could have sworn there was one you had to make it all the way up to the 13th floor it, it was very disappointing uh thankfully i mean we also went to like sea world so it wasn't like a total waste the only reason that i made it this high up my list is because they have this slide that if you get the fast pass you go through the slide i believe that's what they said was that's the difference on it. Uh, so basically you go from the top and, you, and it uh, slides you down to the basement. They give you like this little like, I don't know, it's, it's cool but they're like kind of like the toilet seat cover in a way so you can slide down. The lady's giving you rules of obviously of course I wasn't paying attention to them. I did read some of them and I did notice I think the very last rule was you have to be like this. Obviously when I went down I was not like this. So I was the last one down the deal because I'm always the caboose. I like being in the back. Um, I'm not a, I don't like the front. I just, I really enjoy the back. So I get to like also scare, <laughs> scare my group and just kind of like enjoy everybody else getting scared. My older sister went first and I don't think I heard her scream, but then the other sister went and she screamed and then the baby sister went and she screamed and I went, okay, so there must be something down there that's probably gonna like, you know, get me or there's gonna be like some kind of shadow it's gonna be something that's gonna scare me no what they were screaming at is that you know you go and you're kind of like going and then it's like a like a drop so that's what they were screaming at and i just remember going ah and, and i'm like trying to hold on to kind of stop myself and i'm kind of like hurting myself because you know i'm going kind of fast and my arms kind of like hurting midway down the slide i remembered Put your hands here. <laughs> Finally, the end, they, they kind of just went there and it was like pretty much there. Like it was done with by the time I realized that, hey, there's a reason why they told you to do this. Um, but another one that's kind of like, um, again, just not that far down the list just because there are worse ones that are a little bit less memorable. Um, and in 16th place, we have the House of Torment in Austin, Texas. This is the first time that we actually traveled outside and stayed somewhere. Um, there were two haunted houses in this i believe they were actually pretty good one of them was more than the other you're in like this maze and of course they have the chainsaw there kind of chasing you i know at one point my nephew kind of me and him we were kind of like kind of going to the side and then i kind of like grabbed him so he can shield me a little bastard like took off and left me there and i'm just like oh my god um but my sister she was like terrified because she hates the chainsaw so it's really funny a uh, little fun fact every time we go we always look out for the chainsaw guy and we're always like the short one that one over there and number 14th would be creek manor in midlothian texas i believe we went to that one last year at this moment you guys i don't really remember they're starting to all kind of smush in there together and then honestly i'm having the worst time trying to keep up with what number is what and i'm sure yeah, I know that my last two rankings, I think it was, I messed up my numbers. And I'm pretty sure my numbers are going to be messed up on this one. So I really can't focus on what happened on each other's house. I'm so sorry. But we're going to just push through it, you guys. That one is my number 14 pick. For whatever reason it is. In 13th place would be Moxie Manor in Bedford, Texas. <laughs> I don't remember what happened in that one either. Wait. 
I think this one's closed. No, it's not closed. It's not closed. It's not. And number 12 place would be Ripley's Haunted Adventure in Arlington, Texas. This is with the Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um, they do have a little like haunted deal going on in there. It's actually really fun, um, especially when you go through the a mirror maze they actually have people there scaring you so it's actually really entertaining this run and then plus you know if you go and you see the rest of the stuff that's happening in there it's totally i feel like it's worth your money i had a lot of fun when i went guys coming in at number 11 would be the slaughterhouse in dallas texas um at that particular time it was actually in deep ellum they actually moved it twice but this was the very first haunted house that i went to ever it was actually like my senior year it's more scared at that particular time we actually ended up taking my brother so it was a little bit handicap accessible um there was a little moment where it did get a little bit like uh, and um it did kind of take away from it because the uh, actors did have to come in like kind of help us kind of maneuver him around uh whatever was kind of close and narrowing the um the space but uh, he enjoyed it. He had a lot of fun. He actually likes stuff like this as well. Um, of course, when we get to the strobe light situation, we always kind of have to cover up his eyes just because, you know, we don't want a seizure to happen. And but we have made it, you guys. Top 10 haunted houses that I have been to. Coming in at number 10 is actually Six Flags Over Texas Fright Fest in Arlington, Texas. I really, really enjoy it. It is a lot of fun. Obviously, go closer to when it's getting dark just so you can kind of really enjoy all the shows that are happening and uh, get chased by the ghouls and um you know get on the roller coaster at night there's something about it that i just like really really enjoy do unfortunately now i suck and like i really can't get on roller coasters anymore like that literally like broke my heart i really haven't been able to do roller coasters in quite a few years um i can maybe do like two or three tops but then i started getting like really dizzy or lightheaded but of course you know it is fun for the whole entire family coming in ninth place is dallas scaregrounds in dallas texas this one was a lot of fun as well we only got to enjoy it for a few years before it closed down but this one actually was handicap accessible so we did get to take my brother there for about two years i think we only went a handful of times and um they did have to kind of get us in through a little side entrance so we did kind of miss that very first little entrance deal but it was okay he loved it we loved it i might be a little bit biased and kind of have it up higher just because it was handicap accessible and then jesse was able to you know enjoy it as well so anything that he's able to enjoy and we're able to um, have him participate in it gets like really high up on my list and i just think it's really great i really wish they would make haunted houses more accessible um, because you know obviously they're really not me we had that one I mean it was a little bit rough don't get me wrong it wasn't like full full on like easy to get through and I think that one had like three of them if I'm not mistaken I'm not exactly sure and in eighth place would be the haunted train tracks in San Antonio Texas now this is something that we went to when we went to the 13th floor it's like one of the first things that we did when we got to San Antonio you can go at any time it's free you guys it's free it's the only one for my list and Seriously, you guys, it is real. We got pushed off that damn train tracks. Desiree, oh my god, let me put my foot up because like I'm literally talking about that. And I got scared. Desiree ended up taking some photos, and you kind of see a little shadow. And Annette and myself, we stayed in the car. We're like, hell no, we're not getting off this damn car. Y'all go out there, y'all get murdered by the train tracks. Whatever the hell's gonna come, and it's gonna get you. But we're gonna stay in the car. And then we told Oscar, like, you know, if anything weird happens, you take off. You take off. Don't wait for nobody to come back in the car. That's what they get. But it's just like, well, my son's out there. Well, you know what? Um, yes, you guys, you do not want to be like stuck with me in a scary situation because I will leave your ass. Coming in seventh place would be the haunt house in Cato Mills, Texas. I believe this is the one that's also closed, but it was really, really good. We really enjoyed it. Uh, I do know that we did end up going back and we did the lights out version of it as well. Which I, I wasn't too fond of that, to be honest. I think I've only done it like twice. Coming in sixth place would be the Boneyard. At the time that we would go to it, it was actually in Arlington, Texas. And it was probably about five minutes away from a Six Flags. But they ended up closing it. And then they reopened it a few years ago. And they made, did it in Dallas. And it was supposed to be bigger. And quite honestly, the Boneyard was probably one of our favorite. And somehow when it got to Dallas, we never managed to go. And in fifth place, we have Dan's Haunted House in Dallas, Texas. That one was actually really, really fun. We went for the first time, I believe it was last year or the year before. But you're you're actually like outside and it's uh, like 
kind of through the forest did get uh quite a few scares from there the only thing is that because i have fallen at a haunted house before i am very like Ugh! when it's outside and it's like gravelly <laughs> not gravity gravity um it has a lot of gravel because i did fall on a rock and i'm very just prone to falling in general i'm like bien torpe like i literally am like anything like if there's like a twig a rock a hole a ditch whatever i will find said thing and i will like um, they were actually closed this year which was really sad that was one i believe that they said they were looking for a new location in fourth place would be corpsewood haunted forest in wolf city texas when you're driving up to this place you guys you are going like out into like the boondogs it's kind of creepy going in and you kind of like turn in and it's like this big like open field and there was really not that many people there were like are we in the right place and we're like yes because there's haunted house over there it was creepy you guys but then it got even creepier because there's no cell service that is right there's no cell service this was us the whole time it was like this little small little space up where you would check in um that you got like a single little bar and we're like oh my god we need service because we have our groupons i mean we're like we're for sure going to die out here nobody's gonna know where we're at and it was actually really 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 good uh we, we were i love it when you're able to get scared before you actually enter the said haunted attraction or house or whatever it is when you're already getting that feeling from just being in the parking lot or like driving up there it's like Whoa! That's awesome. And this was definitely one of them. That ending was amazing. Freaking loved it. And we, you come back in a fucking hayride. And it's pitch black. But it's very, very quiet. I mean, the stars are so pretty. But it's very, very quiet. And we're just like, we know something's going to happen. Somebody is going to like pop up somewhere the actual attraction was kind of short would be the only downside coming in in third place would be reindeer manor in red oak texas this is another one that's one of our absolute favorites that we pretty much go every year to there are three haunted houses uh included with this one it is a lot of fun and this is another one that you start getting like creeped out when you're driving up there i do recall there was this one time that we went and i believe it was raining or like it was sprinkling and my friend was actually driving and she had a full-on panic attack you guys it was so funny we had to literally like swap because she could not keep driving she, you're going through like this really dirt road and you just see like crosses all the way across and we're just like oh my god we're gonna get murdered it's a kkk what's going on here all right there you guys we are there top two the one that's in second place was actually my favorite and then reindeer manor was actually second favorite but then first place we went to that one this year scared the shit out of me so that one moved up to first so second place is actually the dark hour in plano texas i i love that place i think it's so fun it it's not really scary to be honest with you i actually ended up going there once with just me and my cousin which was the very first time that we went we were so brave because it was just us two i mean everything about it you guys is like so high tech and the set design is absolutely amazing and i think that's why we did not get scared my cousin or i when we first went because this was literally us the whole time we're just like Oh, something would pop up and I'm like, oh my god, like look at your makeup. We do have, I believe it's two haunted houses. The small one, I only recommend for you to do it once. Like I think once in a lifetime is good. I think I've done it twice and I was just like, the second time I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing. And I, and I had gone like a few years apart so I thought they were, had maybe like did something differently but it was pretty much the same stuff. But the second one, you literally are getting scared by like old school um, monsters. So you have like Dracula, you have Frankenstein, the werewolf. I uh, think there may have been a mummy in there. So just if you are into like the old school monsters, then I think you would enjoy it. This one actually is one that's open all year round. We open for like Christmas time. They do some kind of winter deal. And then they have Valentine's Day. They have St. Patrick's Day. But um, but yeah, just go on their website. If you missed it during the Halloween season and you're curious, you know, go through uh, go through the uh, other times that they're open. Let me know how they are. Because I, I 
I'm really interested in going. I really want to go during like Christmas and like Valentine's. And that brings us down to my number one pick, which is Spooktacular Nights at Yesterland in Canton, Texas. She went for the very first time this year. That was actually uh, one that now that I think about it, I forgot to mention it on my list and I'll get back to that other one. It was like a haunted ha asylum and I'll just kind of randomly place that one. We were like in and out of wanting to go or not. They have fireworks, you guys. I think it's at 8 o'clock. It is more for kids, so you are more than you can definitely take your children to this so we weren't really wanting to do it because it's not necessarily a haunted house but they do have a lot of like really neat things but the thing that really scared the shit out of me was the corn maze you guys and this was a very long corn maze i'm telling you like we all got really scared like all of us <laughs> i literally screamed how much fun they also sell food there that's very affordable and it's actually really really tasty and they have paintball there as well and apparently during christmas time you get to shoot santa claus but that corn maze you guys um it's about 20 something dollars to go in and it's totally worth so, it with that said that kind of brings me to why my list i was missing a, a number in here was because i left it open so in number where is it at I guess at number 16 place. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put that at number 21. The Haunted Hall Asylum in Canton, Texas. It was it was really short. Um, not worth it at all. Um, I didn't get scared. I, I walked through it just fine. I didn't even think it took five minutes to be honest with you. I, it's not something that we would go back to. Um, and then after we left there, we kind of Googled and uh, and it ended up finding that spectacular place. That's my list. That is all my rankings for all 26 haunted houses that I have been to in Texas. I do want to go to some out of state. Uh, somebody just told me that there's like this really awesome corn maze. I think was it pennsylvania um if you are from pennsylvania if you've been over there that is like the largest haunted uh corn maze that there is that people get lost and if you they have to come and find you and there's like jason chasing you i don't know you guys it seems like a lot of fun i totally want to go i would totally get lost i might die in there but whatever it is what it is i really wish i had thought about this video last month so i could have had it up possibly by the end of september that way you could have gone and enjoyed it this year but now you have to wait a whole year but now you'll have reference to come back to um but i mean it kind of worked out because we ended up going to three haunted houses this year uh, you know let me know down below which haunted houses that you've gone to how do you guys rank them have you been to any of the ones that i've been to are you looking forward to go to any of them you know the season has come to an end sorry about that you guys i thought it was charging my replacement battery while i was filming but apparently i didn't stick it in that thing right but it's okay i put it in uh, let it charge and took off the rest of my stuff so now you get to enjoy my other scary face right here let me go ahead and get on with my little tips that i have for you guys before you go to a haunted house have some hand sanitizer with you at all times especially if you have a small bladder like myself so while we are within the porta potty talk one of the things that we actually ended up doing and a lot of people actually um end up copying us after they see what we do and they all say it's a good idea and i just want to share with you guys you know just get your phone and turn on the flashlight and on the top of the uh, porta potty there's like little holes you know like the ventilation place it on top and uh, it just kind of brings in a little bit of light that way you are not total darkness in the porta potty little heads up in the cutting edge in the porta potties in the back you'll notice that they'll have they'll have like little slits cut cut up because there's actually some fucking assholes that are going with the chainsaw and they're putting the chainsaw within the hole because of that that it's bad just generally what if there's like some peeper back there okay the biggest one for us is also getting there early we we usually end up leaving our house about 6, 6.30, depending on how far it is. We usually try to get there as early as possible because we are not about that line life. We leave that way you don't have to waste that extra buck on having to get the fast pass. Because even getting the fast pass, it is a short, you know, run through. It's kind of like a waste. So just best is to get there early. Maybe, you know, scratch that. You guys keep getting there late. That when we get there early, there's no line. So just go ahead and like, forget about that. You guys get there late and my final tip is always look on their website or on groupon for discounts 
most of them do offer some sort of discount you are able to get quite a few groupons uh reindeer manor usually is always on there i don't think it was actually on there this year but that j and um f1 is on there as well the hall hotel one was there this year usually when we do try a new haunted house it is from the groupon section or you know go on their website to see what kind of discounts they're having um i know for the dark hour at the halloween stores they'll have like a five dollar off coupon they also have where you're able to text a certain number like cutting edge you're able to sign up um, texting a certain number and they'll give you like a uh, text uh, coupons I get them all the time five dollars ten dollars two dollars the one in Waco actually has different ones depending on when you go what weekend it is the weekend that we actually ended up going if you donated a liter of blood you were able to get a free ticket to go into both haunted houses so it's actually kind of like a win-win so just kind of always look on their website for what kind of discount they have whether it be for the entire season or for each individual week uh, maybe some weeks they don't have a uh, uh, coupons or discounts available but it doesn't hurt to try because you know if there's a discount available why not take advantage of it uh, but yeah those are all the tips that i have for you if i by any chance i missed any or i think about it later i'll go ahead and comment down below evie annette if i'm missing any good tips for people comment down below uh, i hope you guys enjoyed my rankings and then my tips for haunted houses i you can tell that i go to haunted houses a lot that i have freaking tips for you guys before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified until then i post something new and until next time i hope everybody has a happy and safe halloween i'll be seeing you guys at concessions bye